Během života potkáte různé osobnosti. Za mnohými z nich stojí zajímavé životní příběhy. A ty nás v progresu s Invest Holding inspirují a motivují. V našich podcastech se s vámi podělíme o tyto příběhy, které nás všechny posouvají dál. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next episode of the Progress Your Mind podcast by the investment group Progressus Invest Holding. This time exceptionally from Karlsbad, where the International Film Festival is currently taking place, by which Progressus Group is a proud partner. And now I'm pleased to welcome here another intriguing guest, Will Rayala. Welcome, Will. Thank you very much. About Will. Will is a Finnish professional snowmobile instructor, trained for avalanche rescue and wilderness first at. He is first pro avalanche guide in Europe, specialized in motorized search and rescue operations, organizing snowmobile adventures in Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Chile, Lebanon, Turkey, Russia and Svalbard. This man, who has more than 30 years experience in snow-covered mountains, also collaborated with the legendary Brett Professor Rasmussen for multiple years. Well, welcome to Karlsbad and thank you for accepting our invitation and coming to see us. Thank you. This is very interesting to be here. It's the first time for me. Great. Thank you very much. Um, You've certainly had an interesting life so far, but I will go back to the beginning. We all have dreams. Every child has dreams. Can you remember who you wanted to be or you wanted to do when you were a kid? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, I, I, I live in North in, in Lapland, in Finland, in Arctic Circle. There's a, a long winter and a lot of snow and cold. And I used to spend my uh, childhood in uh, my grandparents' farm, uh, doing all kind of uh, farm works, forest works, and uh, you tow the logs, the wood from the forest with the snowmobile. But in that time, there were uh, very weak power, and uh, you couldn't go in uh, outside the trail. And uh, I think I was maybe eight years old or something. Then I saw first time a more powerful machine that you can. Uh, gather more speed and maybe go outside of the track. And then I knew that uh, uh, when I tried a machine in the soft snow, that that's the thing what I want to do, surf. And that's how everything started. But not beginning with the snowmobile, actually with uh, another tool, snowboard. Exactly. That was my uh, second question. I know that it didn't start Uh, with the snowmobile at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, but I know about you that you have got great sports career behind you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about this? Why snowboards racing? Yeah, so um, um, I think it was like 1983 or four. I saw first time something interesting in uh, in the movies. It was a uh, Warren Miller, uh, very legendary ski movies, Blizzard of R or something like that. Uh, name of the movie, very uh, artistic way how to present uh, free skiing and uh, powder snow. And they have an interesting um, uh, ski, wider than the ori original ones. And they were standing sideways. And then I saw later in, in Eurosport, I think it was the first uh, European World uh, Championships. And for some reason, I don't know, don't even remember how nowadays, I reached a, a ski shop in Helsinki and asked if they have this white ski. And they told that uh, monoski. I said, no, not monoski. Something you stand different way. And they said, it's a snowboard. I didn't know the name. And uh, I bought it. And uh, yeah, it was hard for the first few days because I was the first one. No one to uh, show me how to do it. But when you pick it up, I fall in love with the curves the turns, the curves, the G-forces, the powder turns, everything. And that was my first love, and it still is. I, I love the snow, and I love turning around. And uh, I guess if we have had um, two lives, I, or more lives than one, I guess I've been a surfer before or something. I'm still hunting the perfect turn. 
I totally understand because I remember myself starting with snowboard, yeah. like falling down and getting up all the time. But it was a pure love. I yeah. fell in love and I really understand you. Uh, we also speak about motivation here with our guests. Uh, what motivates you? At that time, mm. I know that you were very successful and you mm. didn't say mm. about your success. Yeah. Can you tell us yeah, how successful you were at that time? Yeah. So um, it started uh, from pure interest and, and uh, you know, then you start feeling that you get much more out of that. And uh, I heard about the competitions and uh, I went for, uh, I think it was 85 or 86 for the national championships did quite well and then they invite me to European Championships in the same year and that's how it started. I see all the uh, young boys and girls all around the world, also from Asia, North America, um, doing the same sport and uh, it, it, for sure it was sport already then but with a different spirit, like everybody was happy and uh, uh, helping each other and cheering up and wanted to build up the community already in that time without any social media or anything like that. And uh, it took me for 15 years. I um, was able to build like a professional career as a professional racer. And I tour um, around the world, the World Cup. And uh, uh, I think my best result was seven in the World Championships. And then of course, many victories in, uh, in uh, Finnish or Swedish or any Scandinavian races. But that was very interesting time. And, and very impressive, <laughs> thank really. You. Thank you. There, there must have been times when it didn't work out as you expected, or mm. maybe you were exhausted. Yeah. What cheered you up? For sure, like we all have times that uh, don't go as planned, or you, you get injured, or things just change, like uh, like uh, COVID two years ago when it came, like sudden in a, from the sky. But um, I think um, in, in, in life, uh, in your career, in work and everything, so you need to have a longer perspective. Like um, you need to see the goal where you're reaching. And uh, if you get obstacles, so try to find a way how to do that. Sometimes like um, you, you need to maybe give some time and wait or find another way or leave something uh, for that moment, and then maybe you find it again a bit later. But um, for me, it's been always the, you know, the the goal, the long term. Um, I'm trying to see always where to go, but it, it hasn't been easy always, for sure. No. This was the first stage of your life, mm -hmm. and now I'm interested in your second stage or uh, another one. Yeah. Why did you choose? the business you are doing mm. right now yeah. while snowmobiles as a platform for business? Yeah, I guess everything happens by purpose. So after the career, so I, I did, um, I'm calling to myself like a proper business, like a, something else than the, than the sport business or outdoor business. And, um, you know, after 10, 15 years for that and traveling a lot around the world, uh, one day I just, decide in an airplane that uh, I want to do things what I enjoy. I don't say that I didn't never have enjoyed the things what I have done, but I wanted to combine the things. And uh, uh, in that time, it was a bit uh, um, uh, challenges in the business as well. So I wanted to find something what also makes you happy. Money doesn't, money gives you uh, possibilities and, and yeah, it can make you happy for short moments too but the real happiness comes from inside you. And then I remember that uh, I spent first 20 years in a, out in the mountains, in the snow, in the nature. And um, um, during that time, so I, I um, slowed down riding the snowmobile. I started to ride more with the snowmobile because they um, develop a lot. They came much lighter, more powerful, more capable. I did a lot of heli skiing after my career and then uh, uh, snow cat skiing as well. And then at the end, the poor man heli skiing, I took the uh, snowmobile and uh, snowboard with me and ride up the mountain and kick down the snowmobile alone and then ride with my snowboard. And uh, 
I, one morning I just left the board in a car and uh, go riding because I uh, decided that this way I can make way more turns because not only downwards, but upside, sideways, and I can go to so large area because I'm still hunting the fresh powder every time I go out there. That's the best thing you can do in the snow. So um, um, that kind of started to interest more and more. And uh, I, I first uh, um, tackled more from the angle of the running technique and the snow safety. There's still a lot of to do with that as well. And uh, as you mentioned, so I, I work with uh, uh, one of the legends from the sport, uh, Brett Rasmussen from USA, for a couple of years and very interesting times. But um, then more and more, uh, I uh, started to uh, bring it towards uh, adventures or I don't know what else to call it, and to give the opportunity for other people to see the same beauty of the nature, what I have experienced already, or bring them to the places I know it's uh, amazing sceneries or best snow in that time or, you know, whatever is the angle. And that's kind of, kind of how it all started uh, about seven, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. I know, yeah, you mentioned a few services you offer to people. Yeah. Um, I put some of them down and I'll read. So you offer professional guide services, riding technique, training, troubleshooting, avalanche awareness, location search and many others. Um, who are these activities suitable for? Mm-hmm. Who can do these activities? Mm. Basically, anybody who has some basic uh, capability, for example, riding bicycle or, you know, ca- carry their, themselves, their body in a, in a certain way. Almost everybody. And um, uh, in the north where I live, so snowmobile is a very uh, natural um, tool or machine to move around. Uh, by authorities or professionals or reindeer herders or more and more also in the tourist industry. But um, um, less young people come to the um, work where they need to have the skills to, to operate that machine. And uh, I, I have a quite wide range of uh, services from the riding techniques to troubleshooting, um, also great for authorities. And then, you know, a lot about the safety, not only um, about avalanche safety or snow safety, but also about uh, um, safe usage of the machine because it's very powerful and uh, you need to know how to use it and, uh, you know, like start from the basic things to use a helmet first and a safety leash and all that. Like, like in a snowboarding or skiing world, like when I was racing, uh, gosh, it's almost 30 years ago. So, uh, <laughs> some time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, helmets were not so common in the beginning. You have headbands or just beanies. and No helmet, yeah. just a cap. That yeah. was all. Yeah. And can you imagine to go now out for Me? skiing without helmet? I can't, no. I can't really imagine. No, no, no. I would feel no. nervous and weird. Yeah. So, this still happens in uh, uh, with the people who ride snowmobile, especially the ones who work, so they don't see the need yet for that. Um, work-life balance is very mm. important for everyone, mm. for all of us, mm. and everybody should strive to have it. Mm. Um, what can these activities bring to people in their lives? Yeah. So what I'm more specialized nowadays is that uh, when the group goes out with me, they can be mixed group or only female or male, beginners or professionals. So it doesn't matter if there's a a topic for learning or not, if it's just for leisure, but um, they get much more. So uh, a snowmobile, it's actually only a tool. When you um, leave the daily routines behind, when you go to the nature, you can go, same happens when you go by foot, hiking, biking, um, kayaking, um, skiing with the snowmobile. When you get out to the wild nature, to the big landscapes, no humans, uh, no buildings, no noise, nothing. You need to respect the nature. You need to uh, read the nature, the landscape, the weather, all of that. So um, you start to leave the daily roles behind. 
the stress start to get relief. And with the snowmobile, as many uh, another activities where you need to uh, uh, do yourself, you can't have a chauffeur. Uh, you need to do it yourself. So you need to focus for a while what you do. Maybe uh, do some physical, maybe get a bit sweaty, maybe we get some uh, 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 little issues, we get stuck or something. So you focus. Focus something different. And uh, uh, you also reach something. We reach the mountaintop or a new valley or, you know, wherever is the destination. And it's really amazing to see when uh, we shut down the engines complete silence or you can hear wind or something. I have a different, it's amazing, and I have a group of different people. Everybody start to feel like human again and uh, there are no roles anymore and stress is oh, gone, well, yes. hopefully. And uh, that's one of the best parts. So, so they get the opportunity to um, feel free again for a moment and um, feel themselves, feel who they are, and uh, no need to um, keep the role you have in a daily life. We all have roles. This sounds like perfect activities for everyone, <laughs> and everyone should experience this, yeah. at least. Sure. <laughs> so if I understand correctly, just to sum it up, these activities are perfect tool, like for individuals, for groups, mm. for companies, for authorities. Yeah, for, for authorities, so, so as an educational point, it's, it's good, like uh, 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 ski patrols, um, military, depending for the country and who is taking care for safety. So they always need uh, education and that maybe there is uh, more safer ways how to use the machine, or maybe the machine is more capable than you think about that, or maybe the heavy utility machine, when you know, know the right technique, maybe it's more nimble in the deep snow and you can do much more. But um, yeah, and, and for individuals, as we already spoken, so they can get new experiences, but um, also for the companies or troops, it's a great tool for team building. Because uh, the truth is that it doesn't matter um, at the end what title you have or who you are in your uh, civil life. Because we go there out with a team and we must come back as a team. If there are any uh, struggles or accidents or we get stuck or whatever happens, we work as a team. And it really works in a natural way for that. And uh, that that's... I have used quite a lot in the past few years with uh, different small groups, executive groups or whoever they want to send. Well, are you able to rest? <laughs> I am. Or how do you rest? Uh, for the summertime, so uh, um, I try to have a few months for do something else and of course plan for that and do some other sports. Like I like a lot of hiking. But um, the nice thing is that... Uh, it doesn't feel for, for work. Like, I think, I believe that people is, uh, human is uh, super happy when you do something for your living that it doesn't even feel for work. I enjoy every day out there and um, I don't mind if it's rainy, storm, calm, sunny. It's always beautiful, different, of course. But it um, doesn't really feel like a work, work. I don't need to push myself like I'm happy every morning to go out there. Uh, winter is anyhow so short, like six, seven, eight months, depending where you start and where you end. But uh, it's not really like uh, fully around. And... Um, the world is dealing with issue of global warming. Mm. How, what, what affects does it have on those remote areas you operate? Yeah. Because I know that you travel, as I said, you organize these trips to Finland, Sweden, mm. Russia, mm. all over the world. Mm. Yeah. What effects does it yeah, have? That's a good question. And it's true that uh, many times in those um, Arctic areas or um, remote areas in the mountains, so you actually see the change quite a lot in some places. 
So for example, in uh, Nordic countries or um, Iceland or uh, Svalbard, uh, past few years, it's been strange weather. Like uh, this year, uh, I think it was in March. Um, yeah, March. So the heat wave pushed through Iceland to Svalbard to Scandinavia. Everything melted for a while and rivers start open again and then the winter came back. Or um, spring can come earlier or can be opposite as well. That uh, um, Two years ago in Sweden, it was um, snow until August or something in the, in the mountains. Crazy long season. But I would say that um, the ups and downs have get more stronger. It can be really heavy winter or warm periods of the winter, but it's changed for sure. And uh, in some areas you can see uh, the glaciers are getting a bit smaller or it doesn't grow anymore. Like in Sweden every year, I think it's like one or two meters, the glacier is getting um, less height. So. Um, if you compare, maybe, if you have any idea, you know really mm. well, and if you compare it with um, how it looked 10 years ago and how it looks now, mm. is it visible? Is the difference visible? Is there any place you, you mm. really know mm. that, where you can see the difference? Mm. Yeah, you can see, see the difference like uh, if we look like 10 years back or a bit longer. So um, Svalbard is one of them, the huge archipelago between the North Pole and Norway. Maybe that's the most where you can see that it used to have a um, longer time snow where it came earlier the snow or it was more snow and uh, it was white till the ocean, but uh, not always anymore. And uh, that's why they also try to protect the area now more and more. And uh, maybe that's the most you can see. Same thing in the Middle East. Uh, it, it sounds a bit funny, but like they have a great mountain range, for example, in, in Lebanon or Turkey or all the way to the Eurasia. So same thing that uh, some winters are long, five, six months, sometimes only one or two months. So maybe in, in the both ends, it's more visible. In Scandinavia, it's been more or less the same, similar, but still not the same like 10, 20 years ago, the winters. What do you find the most magical about the snow and the mountains? There are so many things for that because it's, it's pure, it's white, like crystals, of billions of diamonds, the, the silence, the wild animals, reindeers, wolverines, all kind of birds you can see. It's endless, it's, it's, it's untouched and just beautiful. And of course, when the night comes, so... Northern Lights, always spectacular. Never get tired of watching those. Just the whole packet, whole nature. I, I love winter. I love the cold, fresh air, and cold snow. The snowflakes themselves are magical. It's hard to pick up one or two things. It's just the whole thing, the whole winter. And... Uh, it's more like a journey that the snowmobile is a great uh, tool, great machine to reach places that it's hard by food or skis or sometimes even with a helicopter. You can get to the places and uh, when you shut down the engine, you know, to listen to silence and see the nature, just sit down and breathe. The whole, whole environment is just beautiful. So, um, don't you want to say that you don't like going on holidays and spend some time by the sea? Or do you? I do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, not as a young so much. And uh, um, I, was, I just wanted to find more snow from all over the world all year round. But I, I do like, like uh, it's nice to have a, a few months summer and uh, like, like, now here it's a fantastic weather and warm rays and uh, of course I do. But uh, I couldn't imagine myself to live at the moment without the snow. But you never know, maybe when I'm old enough, so <laughs> when I've got enough, but uh, now I still love the winter. But yeah, do, for sure, I, I love to have a chance and uh, 
I need to warm up myself too in the summertime a bit. By the way, what is the weather like in Finland these days? Yeah, it's been crazy. It's um, normally in, in northern Lapland, so uh, uh, it's not that warm. So when we talk about the, the, how to notice the climate change, so in the summertime, you can maybe notice more. So it's, it's more warmer. It's uh, like here. It was uh, last week. And it's not very often like that. I mean, hard to imagine um, 35, 30 degrees in Finland. Yeah, yeah. Really hard for me yeah. to imagine that. Yeah. And same thing like Iceland, even in Greenland, they, uh, I think uh, uh, last year or two years ago, they have a crazy warm summer. And in the summer months, you can see the change quite a lot. Wow. Well, what are the plans for the future or any goals? Um, What's next? Yeah. So soon I start to look forward that the snow start to drop down. I for sure hope that the, the world situation would keep more balance, more stable with COVID and all not a crisis and uh, dramas we face around. But um, I'm looking for more turns, naturally. And... Uh, Hopefully some new areas. Greenland will be one of the new destinations for the future. And um, I also never been in Asia. Like uh, I know in, in, in India, not part of China, especially in Japan, they have a great uh, mountains, dry snow. That would be maybe interesting to experience for sure. in the near future. For sure. Great. Uh, well, thank you for the coming and meeting with me, talking with me. And to the rest of you, thank you for your attention and don't forget to follow us on all podcast applications. Have a nice day. Jsme mezinárodní investiční skupina Progressus, která spravuje rozmanité portfolio inovativních firm a projektů. Podnikáme především v oblasti realitního developmentu a výrobního průmyslu. Máme zázemí v České republice, působíme po celé střední Evropě a chceme naše aktivity dále rozšiřovat na západ od našich hranic. 